Hello, Uta Hagen here, and my guest, <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> who's visiting me, is Exa Lancic. We've been spending the weekend together talking about everything turfy and enjoying each other so much. It's just such an honor for me. Um, and I asked Exa Lancic if we could do um, a short interview on the topic of the fallacies of cross-dressing. So um, I, I wanted to ask you about this uh, period in your uh, early adulthood mm -hmm. when you were dressing in a sort of decidedly not feminine way. Is that a, a good description of it? Because I don't know if you consider it cross-dressing. I just felt like I was dressing as I felt comfortable. So I was, I was uh, wearing differently cut clothes, um, had to style my hair differently. Okay. And so. you, like your hair was short? Yeah, I was buzzed for a while. Oh, buzzed? Yeah. Wow. It was both buzzed and then for a while I had buzzed with, with bangs. I'm not sure why I thought that would, it was kind of like a forehead mustache. Okay. <laughs> like, like even, there's even pieces of this that, that I would, uh, I would just ask, do you think that there was something about the thrill and the sort of radical moment when you got your hair buzzed off? Uh, I, I do think that, that buzzing your hair is, is a, a good bucket list item for, for a woman to uh, go through. Um, it was very uh, freeing in a, in a way to, to, to feel like I, I didn't need to care uh -huh. about it and think about it. Right, right, and actually, in terms of what I'm, um, what I want to cover here regarding what I call the fallacies of cross-dressing, um, is this idea that there's this big liberation because it's a break from the past, mm. and um, I think in in what we hear from detransitioners, both male and female, is that they come to a point where it's very constraining and it's exhausting to do this cross-dressing and be focusing constantly on this presentation of being in the opposite sex. It, it definitely got to a point where I, I stopped caring so much and it seemed like more of a distraction than, than something that I needed to be doing. You know, it's a crutch. It's a crutch. It's a crutch okay. that people pick up when they're, they're right. struggling in their life for some yeah. reason. Yeah, and a lot so of the time anyway. right, and so you talk about um, transitioning in, in all of its ways as placebo effect. Yeah, and definitely. I was just wondering, you know, um, if you could expound on that a little bit, because sometimes when I think that when uh, when the general public uh, or someone who is many years away from taking Psych One Hundred One or something. Uh, they they have forgotten what is a placebo what how is it that taking things to change your body could be a placebo anything that you are doing with the intention that it's going to treat you or help you in some way is a placebo yeah and then the opposite is nocebo which is something you expect to harm you that harms you because you expect it to harm you but not for any other reason I see and and what I feel is that people are operating on a lack of information and that if you do anything from social transitioning through up to very radical uh, treatments like surgeries, um, that, that it is damaging and you know, you haven't been informed of the actual risks, you know. Um, and uh, the, other, the other piece of it that I do wonder about, too, is rebellion. Sort of like, uh, it kind of goes along with the idea that you are liberating yourself from something. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there is some rebellion. Um, and I, it, do you have any thoughts about that as far as, you know, what you've observed with others or anything with your own experience? Um, I I do think that especially when you're young, there's there's a lot of uh, angst surrounding being the adult form that you've been expecting to become, and 
uh, what other people expect of you. And so there, there is a, a, an element where you're taking your, your power back in a way and taking, taking uh, control by saying, I'm going to uh, flout what I imagine are your expectations of me, um, which I think a lot of people confuse with somehow actually knowing what other people's expectations are of you. And then you get back into the autism thing where, where the question is, were your expectations of other people's expectations actually the same thing as other people's expectations or were you just wrong because you were young? Ah. Was, was your model simple right. because you were young? Right. And I think this very oversimplified model is being pushed within, you know, the schools, you know, on children. This, this gross oversimplification of what our identity is. And then I, I, I also was thinking about um, the concept of novelty. So I would imagine that there's a novelty, you know, for uh, a male to be putting on a dress, and there's a novelty um, for, a, for a female to put on clothes that, that uh, she has decided are going to make her appear male. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I wore jeans and flannel shirts and I thought I was kind of cute and sexy in a female way wearing these things, and so um, I didn't. I, I this is something that I don't understand. I mean, I think that uh, for men who cross dress and put on frilly dresses and stuff, that it's you know it's uh, pretty blatant, but then. You know, women wear pants, women wear plaid shirts, women wear button-down shirts, women wear, men's wear style clothes that are designed for women. Mm -hmm. And so... No, I mean, there's, I, there's an art to it where you're trying to, to not just wear the opposite sex's clothes, but the idea is that you're making changes and you're choosing things in order to mimic the proportions and be aware of, of what are the actual physical proportion differences between males and females and how can we mess around with that. So like a, a lot of the, the men that I would uh, uh, be friends with and, and trying to, who, who wanted to um, look more feminine in their presentation in some way, um, they would like, for instance, they would, they would avoid strappy dresses because they thought that, that, and then people would be able to see that their shoulders are bigger. Uh. But actually, generally, if, if you have larger shoulders, the strappy dresses downplay it. It doesn't, it doesn't emphasize it. <laughs> so um, there, that, that's just one trick. There that, are probably, that, that there are recommend. people making money on this, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, no. If, if, if I were a bit, more, a bit more craven, I could, I could probably make a living doing this because I'm quite good at, at styling people. Yeah. They look like what they're not. Um, and then, of course, uh, the novelty and um, uh, the shock factor and the feeling of being liberated and rebelling can sort of, um, I imagine, be channeled into sexual type of feelings. You know what I mean? Like that... Um, there might be a certain dopamine fix from that because it's a little bit, there's a little bit of a sexual tingle. Uh, I mean, some, some, some of the men I was interacting with definitely more than just a tingle. It's <laughs> quite, quite obvious. Yeah, yeah. What they were so, getting out of it. So, I mean, you know, I, I think about this every once in a while. Um, uh, it, it, I never thought about it actually until this year, 30 years later, after 30 years after discovering um, my husband Nettie's, my then husband Nettie's um, cross-dressing diaries, I realized that the very first times that he must have gone into the two uh, groomers, one, one a PhD psychologist and one a uh, completely non-certified individual, um, he must have been cross-dressing. I would assume that, that there's a motivation to do that so that you can get that dopamine fix from this so-called professional who's going to say, oh, you look so good in this. You, you're really doing well at this, and so I'm going to affirm you. Do you know anything about, um, you know, from the people you've known, whether, have they talked about the first time they went to an affirming therapist or that type of thing? Did they, you know, dress the part? 
Uh, I assume the one person I knew that definitely went to it, such a therapist that, that uh, she was likely binding because I think she was already binding by that point mm. uh, uh. and, and uh, presenting in the way she wanted to present. Um, and then there was... Uh, what else? I, I know that some people, it's, it's less about getting attention and more about feeling like they're in costume when they go outside and, and feeling like they're safer. For that reason, so it's I don't know that it's always um, sexually motivated. Sometimes I do think it's about the the theatricalness of it and, and and feeling like they've gone through some sort of ritual to be ready to go outside, and in a way that they won't be recognized by, for instance, somebody that had mistreated them in the past. Um, so yeah, I think, I think well, there's different reasons that people. I mean, I don't go outside in schlumpy clothes or pajamas or something like that. I know mm -hmm. that that's not so uncommon these days, but. But I don't. I don't right. feel ready to face the world if I'm not, you know, dressed in clothes. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I I really am against social transition, and especially with with children. I don't. I just don't see it as um, having the correct perspective regarding mm -hmm. inanimate objects, which are clothing, you know, for children. Was there anything else that, that any other uh, parts of this? I'm, I'm just gonna keep it short. Um, I mean, I, so. I just feel like uh, when you go out of your way to, to give the reinforcement on, on a fear that if you don't, they're going to hurt themselves, you know that's that's a very different thing than just recognizing that oh you you've decided to wear something a little bit fancier a little bit more feminine a little bit more masculine than I'm used to seeing you in but you look look nice still like I I feel like people especially young people need to have freedom to um, dress differently and then to find out that actually no one cares that much yes and so I think the problem now is that everyone cares a whole lot when, yes when somebody changes their their dressing and then then that that becomes a means of getting attention a means of getting reinforced and a means of getting your way. Whereas the, the correct response would be tolerance uh, without uh, treating it as being fundamentally different from wearing uh, more sex normative clothing. Okay. And just not caring so much. You know, let them wear the damn dress. I've worn it, said a few times. But yeah, let them wear the damn huge, dress. <laughs> huge deal out of it. Yes. Like, and don't, don't act like it means something. Right. That, that they're not what they are. Right. Because you are what you are. Thank you, everyone.